Jeff Bezos, Amazon CEO and undoubted winner of capitalism. Like a lot of recently divorced middle-aged dudes, Bezos has been going through some stuff lately. But unlike normal dudes, Bezos can't deal with his midlife crisis by just buying a sports car or brewing craft beer. He's the world's richest man. So he's got to do something that's out of this world. Amazon founder and the world's richest man, Jeff Bezos, will soon add a new title, astronaut. His space company, Blue Origin, announced that this morning that Bezos and his brother Mark will fly to space on the company's first human flight. That's scheduled for July 20th. Another seat on the flight is being auctioned off this Saturday. Bidding already underway and is currently more than $2.8 million. That's right, people. Jeff Bezos is shipping himself into space. And you know who this is great news for? Elon Musk. Because you realize for a few hours, he can be like, ha ha, I'm now the richest man on Earth. Yes, the richest man. Ah, oh, he's back. I'm gonna go tweet about Bitcoin now. Now, if you ask me, I think space travel is a natural fit for the founder of Amazon. I mean, think about it. Astronauts are just workers who have to wear diapers because they don't get bathroom breaks. So, I mean, it makes total sense. My favorite part of the story, though, is that Jeff Bezos' ship is auctioning off another seat for this trip. Why? You're Jeff Bezos. Just pay the extra money to not sit with a stranger on a trip to space. I mean, this is the culmination of your childhood dream. You don't want to spend it fighting over the armrest. And I know $2.8 million sounds like a lot of money for a trip to space, but keep in mind, that's basically how much it costs to change your flight on United. Actually, you know what would be amazing? We should all get together and we start a GoFundMe where we buy that second seat and we give it to Bernie Sanders. Man, that would be a trip. This flight could have paid for everyone's health care, but oh, you had to see the stars up close. And why is space so cold? Somebody turn up the damn thermostat. Let's move on now to the big political news out of the United States Senate, the political body most likely to need your help with resetting their microwave clocks. Red states around the country have been coming up with all sorts of inventive ways to restrict voting. They're cutting back on voting hours, making it harder to get mail-in ballots, and requiring that all polling locations in black neighborhoods need to be at the center of a corn maze. Makes sense. And because of all of that, Democrats have been trying to pass a new federal law that would guarantee certain voting rights nationwide. But as they just found out, sometimes it be your own people that take you down. It is Monday, June 7th, and if Democrats were hoping to pass a voting rights bill or end the legislative filibuster, Joe Manchin just tossed a giant monkey wrench into their plans. The Democratic senator from West Virginia announcing that he will not support either, an enormous setback for his party and the president. Manchin defended his decision in an op-ed in the Charleston Gazette Mail, writing voting and election reform that is done in a partisan manner will all but ensure partisan divisions continue to deepen. I think it's the wrong piece of legislation to bring our country together and unite our country, and I'm not supporting that because I think it would divide us further. I don't want to be in a country that's divided any further than I'm in right now. I love my country, and I think my Democrat and Republican colleagues feel the same. Ah, Joe Manchin. I feel you, man. I feel you. But you do realize you and the Republicans are not playing the same game. Like, you think you're solving a jigsaw puzzle together, but those guys are here for a boxing match. And I mean real boxing not whatever Logan Paul and Floyd Mayweather were doing last night. I mean, whatever you think of Joe Manchin's bipartisan fetish, you have to acknowledge he's a terrible negotiator. Because think of it, the only way Joe Manchin can get what he wants is if Republicans are worried that he might end the filibuster. But if he starts by saying that he won't do that, well, then Republicans have no reason to negotiate with him. It's like if a kidnapper called the family and was like, Now, before we discuss the ransom, you should know that your daughter escaped a couple of days ago. I would still like a million dollars, though. Hello? I will say, though, one thing Joe Manchin is very good at is making himself the most important person in the room. Because in a 50-50 Senate, you can become powerful just by saying that you might not agree with what everyone else in your party wants. Like, a Democrat could just say, I'm not sure if we should raise taxes on the rich and everyone pays attention to them. Or a Republican could say, I'm not sure we should hang Mike Pence. <sighs> and finally, let's make like baby girl Lisa and go to Nigeria, where a fight is brewing over Twitter. Everyone loves to complain about Twitter. 
And some people get so sick of it that they quit completely, you know, and then they come back six weeks later to explain why they couldn't actually quit completely. But that's for ordinary people. If you are the most powerful person in your country, it turns out if you get mad at Twitter, you can make everyone quit. Nigeria is a country plagued by kidnappings, extremists, and bandits, but the government wants to crack down on a new type of criminal, Twitter users. It banned the social media platform after Twitter deleted a post by the president. Nigerians are reacting with shock and frustration after the government suspended Twitter's operations in the country on Friday. The move comes just about two days after the social media platform deleted a tweet by Nigerian President Muhammad Buhari that some say threatened to punish regional separatists. Twitter says the tweet violated its abusive behavior policy. This morning, I couldn't even tweet. You see, it's, 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 it's shameful. Damn! I can't believe it. Nigeria banned Twitter. This is outrageous, undemocratic, and indefensible. Also, I will be moving to Nigeria because that sounds like paradise. But yes, thanks to their vindictive president, Nigerians are gonna have a much harder time complaining about the government on Twitter. And on top of that, it's gonna be a lot harder to spoil mayor of East Town. I mean, they're gonna have to go door to door now. So can you understand? The whole time, it was more about the social dynamics of a small town than about the mother itself. The mother wasn't really important, huh? No, Damita Devayo, why would you do that to me, oh, huh? I'm only on episode two. How can you spoil that for me? But hey, man, shout out to African presidents because they will always remind the world what a real dictator looks like. Because remember, when, when Twitter started flagging Trump's tweets, all he did was throw a tantrum. You know he's gotta be jealous as hell right now. It's like I've always said, those shithole countries, they know what they're doing. Hi, Buhari. That is. And just by the way, this is, this is random, but did you catch how the CNN anchor introduced this story? If you didn't, I'm gonna play it again for you. Nigeria is a country plagued by kidnappings, extremists, and bandits, but the government wants to crack down on a new type of criminal, Twitter users. Okay, as an African, allow me to say... What the f I mean, yes, that's all true, but still, what the f Right, you never hear a foreign news anchor talking about the United States that way. America is a country plagued by school shootings, extremists, and failing infrastructure. But the government wants to raise the price of postage stamps. 